let's go to our cowboy boots example and let's let's start to put this into play. So you'll remember that we built our REST API, right? Remember that we built our REST API and we started that on Thursday last week? Yeah. So there's two things I want to do today. Uh, one is we're going to use Joy to um, put validation on that. And the other thing I want to talk about briefly is how to take some of these routes that we've written um, because we've got a bunch of routes right now in, um, in our server JS that I'd like to break out. So in terms of breaking things out, right? I've got all these routes here, this first route, the home page right now, the, the add page and the edit page, as well as this, this view page. I've got all four of those routes that all have to do with products, right? All four of those routes have to do with products. So it would make sense to, to group them together, right? Yeah. Um, so what I want to do is effectively pull those all out. Now, before I pull those all out, I'm going to make one change here. So what I've called the home page right now is really more the, the product list. Um, and oftentimes I might want to have the home page be, be something else. It might have the list of products on it, but it, it might be something else. So I'm going to rename this view here. I'm going to rename this one to product list. Okay, so rather than being the home view, it's the product list view, and then I'm going to reference here it at reference it here as the product list view. Okay, I'm also going to change the the title of that page to product list. So that makes sense. I'm renaming the page product list. Um, I'm also going to change the route to that page to be just slash product, right? So now the route is it not? It's not the home page, but it's at slash product. Um, if I test this, new terminal, npm i. Let's run node mod. So it's running at localhost three thousand one. Um, you'll notice now that it cannot get slash, right? Do you see that? So I've removed the home page, right? So in reality, I probably would want to come back and put something here, um, but for today, I'm not going to. I'm not going to add anything back to there, so there won't be a home page. Um, but you definitely want to have a home page. I'm just not going to have one anymore. Cool. Yeah. So, so now if I go to slash product, I get the the page that was formerly at, formerly the home page. Okay. And what that gets me is that now all of these routes, you can see all of these routes start with slash product. You see that? Um, so that makes it easier to kind of group them together and, and know where things are going to go. Um, do you have to do that? No, um, but I would advise you to do that grouping. Um, in that way to make it easier to figure out where things are. So what I'm gonna do, remember I created this API folder um, and we put the product API in there, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna also create a folder called routes yeah, back here at the root. So we have a routes folder and we have an API folder. So what I'm going to have an API are going to be our, our REST APIs, um, our APIs for the database tables, basically. Um, but what I'm going to have in routes are the actual pages, right? So, so in routes, I'm also going to add a file, and this one's going to be called product.js. So in API, I have a product.js, which is what what is a REST API and generates JSON versus what's in product.js is our actual pages. Um, so into project.js is where I'm going to end up putting 
everything that I, everything that um, is related to those four routes. So before I can put the routes in, remember I need to have a router. So we need to require um, express first. So const express, and I'm going to say this require require express. Um, I also know that I'm probably going to want to debug some things, so I'm going to bring in debug as well. So just like I've started the other ones, this will start with app colon. Um, but then I want to be clear about which module this is. So remember if we look at our API module, you see my path to debug is app API product, right? So I'm going to do that same pattern when I log from the routes module here. So I'm going to do app routes API. That way I know which of these two mod mo modules is doing the, the logging. Is it the routes module or is it the API module? Uh, wouldn't it be apps routes product or product, not API? Oh, you're right. App routes product. You're right. Yeah, that would be that. And I need the database as well. So const db is equal to require. Now, one gotcha, remember it's not just DB now, what's the route to the DB module? Dot dot slash? Dot dot slash. Why is it dot dot slash? Because you're moving back into the, the right. root. I need to move back to the root because right now I'm in the routes folder. I need to go up to the root folder, which is where DBJS is. So. I brought those three pieces in, that's what I need. And now I can start creating a router. So const router is equal to express dot router. Um, and then I'll put my routes. And finally, at the end of that, we want to say module dot exports uh, is equal to router. Right. So does that make sense as kind of my shell for th that I'm going to have for standard for these routes modules? Yeah. Um, I probably also in there, I might want to add these if I have any sort of ones that are going to deal with the body. Um, but I think all the routes that I'm bringing over don't need to deal with um, any post requests. I think these are all gets. So I'm going to pull all the code here, all these all these routes. So product, product add, product edit, product ID. I'm going to take those, copy them, cut them out of here. Those will go here. And the only thing I then need to change is the word app. I just need to change that to router. You can remove the product colon ID, can't you? Because now you're in the... You're right. I could also potentially do that. That depends on how I mount it. Um, yes, I can. Um, so, but let's look at our options here. So when I mount it, remember how I mounted the API module? I yeah. used that line. Um, so I'm going to mount it a similar way. If I mount it app use require dot routes slash product. So if I mount it this way, yeah, mounting all those routes at the root, I don't need to change any of the paths in the module. That makes sense. So if I mount it this way, I don't have to change the routes. It'll work as is. And, and I can test that real quick to verify that that's actually the case. 
So for instance, if I go to app product, you can still like, I can, you can see it's still working. If I do product 21, you can see I'm still getting a product, right? So, so if you mount it without a, a base path here, it's going to mount it, you see, at the root. So without specifying a, a value there, it's equivalent to doing that. Cool? So you're right. So I could mount, I could eliminate that product part from there because all of those start with slash product. What would I need to do to eliminate that part? Mo? Um, you just have to add a product there. Right. Instead of slash. So slash product? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try it. I'm going to go to slash product now or just refresh this page. Well, what happened? You can't find it anymore, right? Yeah, because so, your, your route is slash product, slash product, slash. Icon. Right, right. Because it's that one. It's, it's slash product plus product here. So now it's product, product 21, right? Which is not what I want it to be. So I do have to go not just change it there, but I have to go into the routes module and we'll eliminate it from there. So this will be just slash. This will be slash add slash edit ID. And this one would be just slash ID. And that will put it back to the same routes. Cool. Yeah, where does it make it just product again? Um, where, where is it what? Where, where does it make it where it's just product in there? Uh, why, why, does that, why does it do that right there? Like, why would that stand for product? This? Because when I mounted yeah. it, you see, when I mounted it, I mounted everything in that module, everything that router is routed as Okay. slash product okay. so you take that where you that mounting point and then add whatever path you define in the route so it's it's slash product and then it's also slash so this is basically slash product slash right that's where I'm mounting it so you take you take this and you concatenate what you put here it's the same thing I did when it, with the API. See, I specified it as API slash product, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't specify API product here in the API module either because of that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I follow. It's just, for me, I, I struggle with understanding that. Yeah. Well, what it means is that you can... it it. By, by kind of breaking those things out, um, one of the things that it does, it, it actually means that it's easier to maybe move things around or rename things um, potentially or, or group things together um, rather than having to remember to repeat slash product slash API product, um, either of those in this whole package, right? So that's... Uh, you know, if if you want to if you want to just mount it at slash right and leave the paths the long way, you can make that work. You can totally do that. Um, I just find that it's easier for me um, to do it this way to break those things up. Cool. Okay. So you can do it either way. It'll work just fine. Um, I just find that it's I I find that it's easier and I have less dependencies, um, less issues if I if I do that break. Um, if I simplify the routes that way. Okay. Uh, one thing I might mention before I leave here, you notice how I'm getting this undefined extension, uh, undefined extended. Talks about body parser. You see that? Yeah. Um, so what that's down to, remember up here when I added the URL encoded? Um, oh, it's in the wrong. It's not this one. Um, it's the it's the API one. So if you see that error message in there, 
See, what they're telling you is that you have to provide extended. So you didn't used to have to provide extended. That's something that they've made a, a warning, basically. That's where it says deprecated. It's like, well, you haven't defined it, so you need to define it. So extended needs to be true or false, and and typically I'll put that as as false because I don't want to we I won't want the weird um, behavior that they've added to it with extended true, generally. So that's what makes that go away. If you're seeing that and you're seeing that more than once in your log, that's all you have to change is 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 set extended to false. Um, so one of the things that means once I've broken these things out. Um, oftentimes I won't have any post routes um, in my main server JS. So I typically won't have this line. I typically won't mount that for the entire app. I only mount it for the parts of the app that need it. Cool? Yeah. Um, so you can mount middlewares like that, like the body parser. You don't have to mount it for the entire app. Now you can mount it for individual um, routers. Okay, so now that we've done that, done that, Sinead, done that moving around so that this is shorter because, great, how many lines is my, my server JS now? It's back to 37, right? That's nice, um, back to being much shorter than it was. Um, and anytime I wanna add a new module, you see I can add a bunch of routes to the application by just adding one line here, right? rather than adding a whole, ever, all the logic here. Um, it also means that it's not referring to the database anymore, so I could also potentially remove that in line nine. Um, but I, it, it's likely that I may wanna add that back later, especially for the home page. Okay. So let's go, let's go implement some uh, joy. So first things first, I need to install what package? Install joy, right? Yeah. Okay, so joy is installed. Let's go to our API. So this is an API product. Um, and I am going to require joy, const, joy now I've seen a lot of examples most examples will put this as an uppercase J um, as far as I can tell, you can use it. You can write this as as all lowercase. There's really no difference. You can all you can do this as all lowercase, or you can do this as uppercase as a joy. Uh, but most examples write it this way. Any ideas why they might maybe write it with an uppercase J? Why might this be an uppercase yeah, J? Yeah, because uh, a small J looks like an I. Mm, well, there's some uh, truth there, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. Is lowercase j a keyword or something? Nope. Definitely not a keyword. A function name, maybe? Readability? So what you just what did you just say? A function name? Yeah, it's one of their function names. You're close. Function names usually start with a lowercase letter though. What typically starts with an uppercase letter? It would be a class, right? Oh. So so joy is a class. That's basically what they're trying to convey by that. Is by using an uppercase J there, they're saying that this is a class that we get back from this module, not a, um, not something else, not like an object. Cool? Yeah. So, so typically you'll see if it's an object, 
you'll see a lowercase letter to start it out with, which is what most modules are, or you'll see an uppercase letter to say this is a this is a class. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it for this example as a lower as a lower lo lowercase because um, I think that's fine. Um, but you'll see examples both ways. Potentially, it's it's it doesn't. The point is, it doesn't really matter. It's just a convention because it's kind of a class is why they put that as uppercase. Okay, so in here we want to say let's let's use joy, right? So remember, first step to bring in joy is we need to require it, and then we need to create a what. What's step two? A joy object. A joy object? Okay. Or a variable to hold the joy object. Okay. What did I call that variable? Data. <laughs> okay. So I called that variable a, a schema, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay called that a schema, so I need to create a schema. Now, if I'm looking at these different routes and seeing, well, what do I need to validate? If I look at first this one, right? Does this one receive any data? No, it doesn't get any parameters, right? So it, it returns a, a list of products, but there's no inputs, right? So I don't have anything to validate. You see that? Because there's no inputs, there's nothing to validate in this route. Okay. What about this one? Where I want to get um, a, a single uh, product by its ID. Is there anything I need to validate? The ID. Maybe the ID. Um, so I could validate the ID. Um, if I do that, really all I would need to say is if I was going to create a schema, I could say, well, what kind of thing is the ID? Number. It's a what? Number. It's a number. Okay. Are there any requirements for that number? Must be unique. Okay. Greater than, zero, greater, greater than zero. So typically your IDs start, your, if you have an auto increment column, it typically starts at what number? Oh, Usually starts at one, right? So I could say it's a minimum of one and it is required. See that? Uh, Mr. Smith, wouldn't your joy be lowercase because you said it as lowercase? Oh. That explains why it wasn't working. Like, why is my suggestion not coming up? That's right. Maybe I'll, I'm just gonna go up, back to uppercase joy because I'm gonna, if I keep going that route, I'm gonna get myself confused. So I'm just gonna do uppercase joy. Yeah, in both places. Okay, so that would define basically my schema in this case, right? It's just a single number. Um, so if I wanted to validate the ID that way, um, then I might have to say, well, let's say um, await schema dot validate and maybe validate the ID there. Does that make sense? So I define the schema and then I tell it what to, you know, I tell it to actually validate it. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So let's try that. So if I go to API product 21, <laughs> Something broke. Oh, because I didn't restart my server. Duh. Node mod. Okay. Server's back up. 
Okay, so it says cannot get API product 21. Oh, API product ID. Because I put ID in that path. Let me, let me pull ID out of that path. And I put this back to just that. Which, did that mean? Yeah, no, I, I'm going to leave that as is. Because I'd have to move this around too. So ID, API product, ID 21. Okay. So it works, right, with 21. So far, so good, right? What would I expect to give me an error here? Give me an example value. Zero. Zero? Okay, let's try zero. Okay, so that does something. Um, what did it end up doing? Um, so zero. Well, I mean, if you don't have an ID of zero, it still counts as a min one, so. I didn't do validate a sync. I just did validate. That's what happened. There we go. So you're saying what? Uh, never mind. Yeah, I just I had the wrong sync text. It should have been validate async. I was still using using validate, which returns it a different way. It doesn't throw an exception. So, okay. So zero doesn't work. I could trust foo. Get a validation error. Value must be a number. Cool. Right, so now it gives me an error if I don't give it a good number. Make sense? Yeah. Um, so, so I can validate an entire object. I can validate a single field. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Is I'm just validating a single field. Um, what about this one? What about find by name? What would my schema be here? Uh, joy dot alpha num. Alpha num. String first. Well, but it it would be a string first, right? It is a string, um, but as it turns out, my names these are product names, right? So they can actually have special characters. The they can actually have special characters and um, spaces and such. Um, I haven't said that that's not not allowed. Um, so, so I'm actually would allow other things in there. So I would just say joy string and that it has to be a string. And I might say that I want to make it required. So it's a string that's required and maybe trim it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, does the order matter on those? Um, as far as I know, it doesn't. As far as I can tell, it doesn't matter what order you specify them in. Um, has been at least my experience. So this would be validate async. And so the only value here I got to validate is the name, because that's the only value that the user is giving me. So we could try that. Um, what's a, let me see if I can get a name of a product. Um, so let's see, API, so product 21. That's the American racer hats. So I should be able to do name slash American racer hats. See that? And that's kind of like where I can't do alpha num because it's alpha numeric because it's got spaces in it. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what happens if I put spaces at the end? Okay, that's fine. What happens if I put spaces at the beginning? Right? So, what happened there? What happened with this? Didn't I tell it to trim? Yeah, but you put it after required, didn't you? Or does it not matter? It doesn't matter. So I told it to trim, but what value am I still sending to the database? I'm sending the untrimmed value. You see that? So I get the value from the request parameters name, right? But I don't do anything with the return value from this. See that? So I might want to clean that up and maybe say, do it this way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then I'm using the trimmed name and I might want to do the same thing with, with that here to make sure I'm using the sanitized values for both the ID and the name. Because as it turns out, request.parameters.id, anytime I take a parameter off of a route like this, this request parameters ID is actually a string, not a number. Um, and your request, your request parameters are going to be strings, not numbers. So that should turn it into a number. So there we go. So now I've trimmed it. Um, and you can see <laughs> it's still getting the it's still getting the value. Cool. So if you're doing any sanitizing, you need to make sure that you save the result of the validate async, not just discard it. Okay. Um, so I can probably do the exact same thing when it comes to the, I could probably use that same schema for category, same kind of structure. Um, so I can say await schema dot validate async right so validate the category validate the names um, so I can validate a single single field there um, but that's not so much where the the big value of this is right so you can validate single fields like this and and that's one way to, to use it but the real value of joy comes when you're working with objects, right? So those th first three pass the get, the only thing we're passing is in that one value, so that's all I have to do there. But what about this post, right? If I post, I'm in trying to insert an entire product, right? Cool? Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to insert an entire product. Well, here I might want to have a, I, here I definitely want to have a schema. And that schema might look a little bit more interesting. So here's where I would say joy.object, because what I expect is to get an object. Okay, now what objects, do, what properties is this object going to have? Um, I could look into insert product. And if I look at insert product, I can see that when I insert a product, I need a name, a category, and a price. You see that? Yeah. So I would expect those on my schema here. So when I insert a product, we need the name. What data type is the is the name? Probably a string. Is it required? Yes. Okay. 
Um, is there a minimum length or anything for the name? I mean, you can probably have like three characters. Okay. So let's say the minimum length of the string is, is three. Now, it's worth noting in my schema, let's look at my schema real quick and look at the um, products table. Does my products table establish a minimum length for that name? No, but it does have a max length. Does have a max length, right? So because the database defines it as a max length of 100, I probably should put that in in my schema, right? Yeah. So so the mac, the minimum length is generally something you don't define in the SQL, but you can define it on your 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 clients on your your validation logic. Um, but that's something we need to pull here. So we're gonna say it has to be at least three characters, it can be most a hundred. Okay. And I probably want this to be trimmed as well. So I've got the name, I've got the category. What data type is the category? String. It's a string. Probably required, right? In fact, if I look at my schema, right, I can see it's not allowed to be null. So I might put in required. I might say this has a minimum length of three. Three is usually a good number. I could do one here, but I'm gonna say three. And max of seven, because that's what I've defined in my schema is limited to seven. And then finally trim. Now it's complaining here because I don't have a comma at the end. Okay, so I've got a name, a category, and a price. What data type is my price? Joy dot number. Number, okay. So price is a number. Probably needs to be required. Um, does it have a minimum value? What's the minimum price that I can put in? Zero. Okay. So minimum price of zero. Is there a maximum price? No. It's whatever you defined in your SQL. Okay. Yes, I did effectively define a maximum price. Because remember I said it is decimal six two? that comes with a limit, right? What does that six represent? Six digits. Six digits, right? So what's the maximum value that I can enter? $9,999.99. Okay. So the max would be that. Although I might say maybe just have it 99999 because it's probably at that point it's big enough. But yes, technically it would be that. So my database is defining that it can't be bigger than that. Okay. Um, what else? So I've got a min and a max. Do I need to specify how many decimal digits it can have? Yes, two okay. digits. Two digits, and what method do I call for that? Do you remember what method that was? Two fixed. Huh? Two fixed. So two fixed is how I can take it from a, I can specify how to format it, but I need a, a joy requirement here. So it's a different method. Talk about it on my slides. Is it precision? It is precision. So I need to specify the precision as two. 
specifies the maximum number of decimal places. Okay. So joy number required, min, max, um, and precision. That, I believe, is everything I need to define the schema there. Okay. And, and now once I've defined the schema, remember I have to use it, right? So I want to also go and run that. So schema dot validate async, right? And run the request body through that. Questions? No. Okay, so so let's test this route and see if it works and let's see if it does what we think it should. Um, so in here, I'm gonna close this one, start a new one. So localhost 3000. I think my route to this was API slash product. I want to do a post, right? So if I try to do a post now, oh, it's 3001. I'm running on 3001. Send. Okay. Now I get this error response back. Okay. So you can see that that's kind of more helpful. Right, so it says name is required. What did? Let's look at what the old error message was before I made this. Before I put in, um, before I put in joy. So if I didn't validate this, I just try to insert it directly. What was my what was my error message that I got? There. Error no default for field. You can see how this is really not a very user-friendly user error message. Yeah. See that? Because it's saying stuff about SQL, which really what the user needs to know is that they well, didn't specify a, like a name, a category, etc. Right? So um, this is not a very user-friendly error message, which is what we're trying to get to. So that's why I'm trying to do, um, whoops, wrong thing. That's what I'm trying to do here, is give a, a better error message from my API. Okay. Um, if I say, Oh, we can try those values. So let's try to put in, I'm going to go to body, form URL encoded, and let's start adding in things. So name, let's call it test product, hit send. Okay, so it likes the name, it's going on to the category. What category should I enter? Maybe other, hit send. Oh, and now it tells me that I need a price. Let's put in the price as negative five, right? That's a good price, right? Negative five dollars. Negative ghostwriter. <laughs> so, so that's one of those things you obviously want to validate, right? Is making sure that it's it's a, a good price, and that's where if I say the minimum is zero, then it forces it effectively to be zero or positive. So. I could say a price is zero, it would be fine with that. Maybe 5.333, right? That's a good price too, right? Now that one, as it turns out, it accepted. Okay, so I wonder what, what price we actually got inserted. Um, did it insert it as, as 5.33? Did it insert it as something else? So let's see if I go to my database and let's look at the data there. 
So test product went in as, as 5.33. Well, okay. So it stripped off that last digit. You see that? Yeah. Um, what happens if I, let's do test product two, but I'm going to do 5.66666, right? Let's see what happens then. data okay so it looks like in that case it rounded it up so basically it's rounding it to the closest hundredth closest cent which that's okay um, but it's not letting it get in with actually having three decimal places do you see that yeah which is which is the part I care about basically Okay, so we've defined a, a schema here for adding products. What about editing products? Well, when I added a product, I, I need to know the ID as well, right? I need to have the product ID. So, so what data type is the ID? Number. Number. Okay. Does it have any requirements? Minimum of one. Okay. And is it required? If I want and to update required, a product? Yeah. Huh? Yes, it's required. Okay. So it's not it's not optional. So it's required. Minimum of one. And that's probably all I need. So let's say I want to to validate this. Now, I've got kind of a, an interesting case here because I want to have the the ID right be part of the potentially the route. Um, so it's going to come from one place, but the other three fields are going to be part of the body. See that? Um, so I'm kind of taking I'm taking that from there and slapping it on. So when I do my validation, um, I, I have more than one way I could do this. I could say, well, let's make maybe product, maybe we make that a let. Um, it would be one route. Um, or I could say, yeah, no, I'm just going to let that be let. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. So let product is equal to await and this would be schema dot validate async and let's validate the product okay so now it should give me errors if for instance I try to maybe update a product but don't have all the values there for instance, um, which is a big deal because I don't want to accidentally leave, leave off one of those one of those attributes and then have it um, have it set to blank. Right? Does that make sense? The default behavior had been well, if I don't set the name of the category, it's going to end up unsetting the name of the category. They're end up getting set to blank. Uh, so good thing to validate those kind of things. Um, maybe I go to put, this was test product that was 115. So this is going to be put 11 API product 115, hit send. So it's, it's happy with that. If I leave off the category, you can see that it gives me a error. Category is required. Now it's sending me back as an HTML because I'm still calling next here. So I want to change this over to um, res.json, send it back as a JSON object. So I'm going to say, what did I call it? I called it error up here. So I'm going to send it back as error 
error. And I probably need to make sure I'm doing that in all four of these, in all these routes. Yes. Just to make sure that it always comes back as JSON. So fix those routes and delete is the same story. Should return that. Okay, so now that I fixed that, made that change there. There we go. So now it says category is required. So if I leave off the if I leave off the category, it gives me a nice error. If I leave off the price. Right, so I get validation errors instead of getting database errors. Cool. That all comes from that line with, uh, can you go to the code real quick? Yep. That That's all happening on line 83. Yep. So line 83 where I say schema.validate async, um, basically that ends up throwing an exception. You can kind of think about it. Yeah, so if we're using a form and we're updating a product, then if there's some things we change, it, it should auto-populate, but it won't allow you to enter in blank. Right. Yeah. So it won't let us it won't let us save the the name as blank. So we could try that for in, let's see if we let's see if we try the edit product page now. So if I go edit the product now, Leave hats blank. Well, that didn't do what I wanted it to. What did I miss? Oh, because my code, so I'm getting an error. My edit page actually isn't paying attention to the error. Um, That's what. Um, so when I, oh, yeah, so I didn't set the status. Um, if I set the status on those, then it'll work properly. So I need a status, status code of maybe 500. Let's put that on each of these. Because it's coming back as status 200 success. Mm, that's still not right. So update a product. I said status 500. Oh, I didn't leave it blank. That's what happened. There we go. Um, so I don't think I'm properly dealing with the error. So it's coming back with a 500. Yeah, so it's on me. I I need to fix that code to actually deal with the error. So rather than setting status code 500, I just I need to fix that. So I don't want to set status code 500. I need to actually deal with the error in my front end code. Okay. So what I need to do, what I'm missing here is I need to go to, remember main.js we hooked up the other day? To do, to do this edit, um, when I get a response back, you see I'm kind of ignoring the response. Do you see that? Yeah. The alert. Yeah. Oh, and this actually, that's why I'm not seeing an error. That was the other reason, because I didn't have this as edit. Um, so I'm not seeing anything there saying that we went wrong. So 
let's comment that out for a minute and let's just send an alert with the result. So if I try to leave it blank now, there's that. Now, sometimes you'll get this case where it's, it's showing it as object, object. Do you see that? Because um, by default, what it does is it calls to string on, potentially on the object. Um, and we can kind of, if I call res.toString here as well, I should get the same response. So you can see two string basically gives you usually that. This was not always that helpful, right? So sometimes when you're debugging, I'd like to see the actual object, right? Yeah, probably want to see the actual object. Um, so the way I do that generally, um, there's a method called, there's an object called JSON in JavaScript, stands for JSON. Um, and that has two methods. It has a method to, take a JSON string and turn it into, um, it, it can either take a JSON string and turn it into um, into an object, or which is parse, or it can take a, an object and turn it into a string, which is stringify. So if I say JSON stringify, and I take the response and, and stringify it, then we should see something more useful. Um, so sometimes I'll use that trick to to be able to actually look at what's there. You can see that now. That's kind of spit out the object. Okay. So I'd like to actually though be able to see the message. Price must be a number. Right, I probably like to see that somewhere on my UI. Right? Yeah. So, so how can I pull that out? How can I pull out that message? So you'll remember it's in details, right? Or sorry, it's it's in the error object first. So error dot details, and then you remember where it was from there from details. The message was the message. Okay. Um, but this, just writing it as that, it doesn't work because why? What type of thing is details? An array. It's an array of objects, right? So, so I actually would have to say potentially details zero dot message. Okay, now let's try that. Okay, so now I've got price must be a number, right? So that's that's what I'm looking for, basically, right? And I probably don't want to show that in an alert. I probably want to put that into that field, right? So I might say in here, let's let's write that out. There we go. So it spits it out here, which looks like I didn't mark that as text danger. So I definitely need to go back and fix that on the view to have my output be text danger, which it is on the edit page. Oh, it's type, not class. I need a class on that to be text danger. 
That's why it's showing up in black. There. So does that make sense? So I'm kind of pulling out the error. If I yeah, can you see your error code again, please. Um, which part? Uh, just uh, main.js. Yeah. So I'm I'm basically doing a selector for wherever my thing is. Your selector obviously may be different, um, but that's the way I'm selecting it because it's the ID of the form, and then I've got a single output tag in there. So I'm spitting it out that way. Now, this is maybe not that fault tolerant because I am not checking that um, some of these things are there, right? So I'm not checking that there's error. I'm not checking that there's details. I'm not checking that there's message. Do you see that? Yeah. So um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting it in that way. Um, so there are a few things you can do um, working with it. Um, and so what I would say is I think on the API side, if I remember right, um, let me pull up one of my other projects. Um, I know that I pulled that out a different way. remember what I ended up doing. Okay, yes. Um, I think that there is, so there's a method, there's a property on here that you can get to that says, is this error a joy error? So I can say if um, if it's a joy error, we'll hand it one way. If it's if it's a different kind of error, I'll hand it a different way. So for instance here, I'm gonna say, first of all, we wanna see if there is an error. So res.error, right? Then I want to, then I want to show the error. Otherwise, if there's no error, we wanna send you back to the product view page. Everybody with me on that so far? Yep. So if there is an error, go ahead and display it. Otherwise, do what you were going to do because it's successful. Okay. Now, when it is an error, we need to kind of figure out what the message is. So I might say maybe const message. Um, the first thing I can do, I can actually check if the error is a joy error. Um, so if I say res.error.isjoy, and I think, I believe I can do that this way. So if it is joy, then we can pull it out that way. Otherwise, with, a, with other kinds of errors, it's typically going to be res.error dot message. So I can use kind of a ternary to figure out how to pull it out. Let me test that real quick because I don't know 100% sure that this is going to work. Yes, it doesn't work because I did that on the back end previously. So the is joy check doesn't work exactly. Um, uh, Mr. Smith. Yep. Why is, does the joy in this case have to be capitalized? Because if I lowercase it, it doesn't work. Where Where's lowercase? No, I, I was doing it because you said that the, the capping doesn't matter, but does this case have to be capital? Um, I think, well, let's see what happens if we do this. Um, it's not working either way. It's not working either way. Um, because something happened, that property existed on the back end and it doesn't exist anymore is my problem. Um, so what I need to do is I need to do that check on the back end. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my API and I'm going to kind of fix it there instead of fixing it on the front end. So on the back end, when I catch this error, I believe there I can check if it's a joy error. So if it's a joy error, if error dot is joy, Then I want to do some handling with it. So I'm going to say, let's get the message. So here, let's say the error is error.message. Otherwise, it is error.details. Detail zero dot message. Try that and back in here. I'm going to try just res.error. That fixed it. Yeah. So the catches I have to do the check on the back end. So this is this is what I introduced into there. You see that? Yeah, and did you fix anything else on the main? On the main, I just changed this to write res.error. So no ternary here or anything, just res.error. Because I turned it into a, a string. So one of the things we haven't done and, and the way I would kind of twiddle this around potentially is to move this logic that I'm writing here, actually move it into an error handler middleware, and then I can go back to having this just be next. Um, but because we haven't talked about error middle handler, I'm just kind of having to put this here and potentially duplicate it maybe. Um, now I can, right, I could potentially take this and probably make it a function, right? So I can call it. If I wanted to break this off from a function, what sort of parameters would it need to have? What things do I need to, to send back the error this way? So if you look at what it needs, right? We obviously need the error object, right? Yeah. Do I need anything additional? I probably need the response, right? Yeah. So if I if I were to pull this out as a function that I could reuse, I could maybe go up here and say const maybe call this send error. And it would need to take the response, or maybe the error, and the response. So if I have those two things, can you see I can kind of reuse that code? Yeah. So if there's an error, we, we do one of those two things. So I can call send error with the error and the response here and this just becomes send error error res and that's what I put in all of these cases here of my API all my catches
Um, so that's dealing with the errors. So I fixed the edit page, right? We probably still need to fix the other pages. So if I think about how I have that with the edit, right? The big thing I had to do was put an if there to if if there's an error. Um, so I'm going to have to do the same thing with the add page. Does that make sense? So if res.error, then we show the error. Otherwise, we go back to the, we go to the view page. Any questions on that for the, the ad product page? Nope. Um, let's test the ad product page real quick just to see if it works. So I need to go to slash product and let's try add a product. If I just leave it blank, there we go. So name is required. Name is not allowed to be empty. Price must be a number. Cool. So it's giving me some, some feedback about what I need to do from my, from my server validation. I might also want to do a check on the delete. So we fix the we fix the insert, we fix the update. The delete probably needs to check that it's a valid ID as well. So similar to how we check the ID in this one, I just need to check the ID. So create a schema, join number. Minimum one is required. And in here I say await um, schema dot validate async. So if we try to hit the, the delete route with, with Postman, then it'll give us a, a error if we don't have a good ID. Okay, that's everything I think for for Joy. So you can start to see kind of how the the you know what the value of defining it this way in here is with your your routes. Uh, so I'm gonna Commit this, push this. I'll, I'll add the the finished code on to I'll add the finished code into Discord so you can kind of look at it, get a second eye on it.